You're very welcome to today's talk. It is a Sunday, the 2nd of May. Now, nothing too heavy today because it's a Sunday, but I want to just bring you a couple of scientific papers. One is showing that antibodies to SARS coronavirus 2 were around in Italy in September, early September at that. That's the first one. And the second one I want to tell you about is antibodies persisting um, about, about 30 weeks now after vaccination. And it may well be that the immunity from the vaccines persists for longer than this, of course, but this is the amount of time we've had. So, so, so basically, this is the Moderna vaccine specifically that we've got precise data for. Um, it's so far so good, and I, and I continue to be optimistic. I always have been quite optimistic about the longevity of immunity from the vaccines. I'm hopefully it's going to be in the order of two or three years, but so far we know it's up to about eight months. But more, more on that in a minute. Let's look at this paper first of all. Now, this is really quite uh, extraordinary, Re really quite extraordinary. Um, and it's, this is the paper here, unexpected detection of SARS coronavirus 2 antibodies in the pre-pandemic period in Italy. So th that sounds like a contradiction in terms, isn't it? But it appears now that it's not the pre-pandemic period. So... Now, so many people have talked to me and say, well, you know, in last, um, you know, th talking about 2019, November, December, they had particular sets of symptoms. Could it have been COVID? Well, let's look at the let's look at the evidence. That's what the paper is for. Now, this is uh, published in I think this is published in Sage Open, actually. Yeah, Sage Open. Um, now, this is like um, it's like an international open source publishing um, journal. But it doesn't restrict itself to any one subject. It publishes on anything. But the key thing is it's open source so anyone can read it and it's free. And I actually published one article in there myself once. And I do know from experience that the peer reviewing process they go through is really quite rigorous. So it's definitely a, a rigorous piece of, uh, piece of science. And as such, it's really quite hard to argue against. Anyway, let's look at it. Persistence, uh, presence of SARS coronavirus 2, receptor binding domain, RBD specific antibodies. So this is what it was looking for. Antibodies to the receptor binding domain. Now, I think we all know this now. So there's the uh, SARS coronavirus. There's the spikes. And at the end here, we have the bit that uh, fits into your cells. And the end part of that there that fits into the cells is the receptor binding domain. Now, if these are antibodies, and the, these antibodies were made to this receptor binding domain, and the antibodies are these um, these Y-shaped molecules that fit onto it, like that, the antibodies. Now, if these antibodies are actually specific to this receptor binding domain, and they are, then that means they can only be generated when the body is exposed to the actual receptor binding domain. So this is this is an absolute definitive evidence for the presence of the virus. Um, so this, so that's what they were testing for. Now, how could they test for it? Because it's in the past. Well, it just so happened they collected blood samples in Italy from 959 asymptomatic individuals, and they were enrolled on a prospective lung cancer screening trial prospective so what this research group were doing purely serendipitously at that particular time was they were taking blood samples and trying to correlate these with things that might indicate what was causing lung cancer I mean obviously we know about smoking but they were, they were looking for other factors in lung cancer but they collected these 959 blood samples from all over Italy and that they, they were preserved fortunately they were they were kept now, what's the official story from Italy? Well, Italy's first two cases of COVID-19 disease, officially January the 30th, 2020, two tourists from China in Rome were officially diagnosed. That's history. That's well recognised. First laboratory confirmed Italian COVID-19 case was Lombardy, 20th of February 2020, the first community spread case. And again, that is confirmed. But of course, by this time... The Chinese had published the genome and people knew what to look for. But these blood samples were taken September 19 to March 2020. SARS coronavirus 2 receptor binding domain specific antibodies were detected in, get this, 111 of these samples. 
So of the 959 samples, which are essentially essentially random blood samples from all over Italy, 11.6 of those turned out to be positive. Now, they are actually literally from all over Italy. So if we look at this, this is the paper here. So there's, there's a full write-up there. It's actually not too difficult to understand this. Well, it does take a few hours to work through it, but um, th th this was the graphic here. So these were where the samples were taken. Now, the, the blue circles indicate um, the... Um, the, the amount of subjects where blood was taken and the red represents how many people were positive relatively speaking and we see the highest outbreak is in Lombardy this region in the north of Italy but of course when we started looking at this back in February uh, 2020 Lombardy was the worst affected area and, and here, here we see why it looks like why that might have been now how this virus got there um, we, we don't really know the most likely thing seems to be that in this area of North Italy, there's quite a lot of migrant workers, including Chinese, who go there for seasonal work and they may well have spread the virus with them. So um, from all over Italy, really pretty, uh, pretty surprising. That in, other, in other words, the virus had spread all over Italy in, in, uh, by, by the end of 2019 much earlier than we had thought. Now, they tested for immunoglobulin M's and immunoglobulin G. So IG stands for immunoglobulin, that's type M. And immunoglobulin, that's type G. Now, the immunoglobulin M's come first and these come second. The IgG's come later. Now, samples taken from September 2019. So in, in, we know there's a total of 111 positive samples. But 23 of those were detected in September. 2019 in Italy and I've read this paper this this is this is definitive this this is the, the antibodies are there uh, 27 in October 26 in November 11 in December 3 in January and 21 in February so they are what were detected uh, so Unexpected very early circulation of SARS coronavirus to amongst asymptomatic, mostly asymptomatic, we'll see that in a minute, individuals in Italy. And again, ju ju just to remind us, this is all over the country. And the first ones were detected in September. So this really is quite a turn up for the books. First immunoglobulin type M, the, the, now the, the immunoglobulin type M's, they are actually made in the first sort of three, four days after an infection begins. And the first one was detected on the 3rd of September. Now, what this means is the person who made these antibodies were, was actually exposed, uh, exposed to this virus in the last days of August, actually. So although it was first detectable by antibodies, 3rd of September, it probably arrived about the 28th of August, something like that, a few days before. This is really quite, um, quite, an, amazing, quite an amazing turn up, I thought this was. Uh, at least one SARS coronavirus 2 positive patient was detected in the 13 regions of Italy, as we've, as we've seen. This was all over Italy in late um, 2019. Immunoglobulin M's were detected in 97 of the patients. These are the ones that are produced first. Uh, the immunoglobulin type G is in only 16, uh, but the IgM's were detected in September. So, so that is consistent with the virus having arrived in late August. Now, most of these patients are asymptomatic. Well, all of the patients, we know all the patients were asymptomatic at the time the blood was taken because clinical details were taken from those patients at the, at the time when blood was actually taken. So they were asymptomatic. Um, so infection clearly more widespread than believed. That's now the statement of the, the obvious. Um, I'm going to show you some other things in a minute that are are interesting and consistent with this. Uh, th therefore, an overestimation of the case fatality ratio. So in other words, there was a lot of these infections around. So, so because there was more infections than were realized, the actual case fatality ratio was lower. 
that doesn't alter the number of deaths in Italy, of course. It just means that um, it just means that there were a lot of cases that weren't known about. Now, this is interesting as well. Looking back, this paper looks back uh, since November to December 2019. So remember, the first case is in September, October. Now, by November to December, many general practitioners began reporting severe respiratory symptoms in the frail and elderly people. And this was described as an atypical, and that means unusual. It's not the typical pattern. Bilateral, that means it was in both lungs. Bronchitis is inflammation of the bronchial passages. Now, it's interesting that we now know that the pattern that uh, COVID-19 gives is one of an organising pneumonia. We heard Perry, uh, Pierre Corey told us that a few days ago. Um, so what is a bit surprising is that the Italian uh, radiologists didn't recognise this pattern but they attributed it to an aggressive form of seasonal influenza. So it's a bit surprising they didn't recognise an organising pneumonia. Now, this is not me being harsh on um, GPs by any means. Uh, where have I gone? There I am. So what, what normally happens when the x-rays are taken, you might get a, a junior doctor looking at the x-ray quickly and saying, oh, it looks like this, that or the other. But they always go for reporting to a radiologist and a radiologist of course is a doctor a radiographer takes x-rays a radiologist is a doctor who interprets x-rays uh, so there'll always be an official report and it looks like they missed that it looks like they missed that so um never mind that's done now uh, attributed to aggressive form of seasonal influenza so there you go we have definitive proof that the virus was circulating in italy on the 3rd of September 2019. Now, is there any additional evidence that supports this early uh, circulation of the pandemic? You know, it's amazing when you think about it. This virus must have arrived in Italy from China in August 2019. In August. Quite, quite, uh, quite a rewriting of the history books, actually. Now, the National Library of Medicine, uh, Paris, December 2019. Now, I have the paper here. Here we have it. Don't take my word for things. Always go back to the paper. SARS coronavirus 2 was already spreading in France late December 2019. So that is that uh, article there. That's why I always put up the links. Click on it for yourself. Paris, December 2019. Patient hospitalised for hemoptysis. Now, that's the American spelling. Heme is uh, blood. Uh, moptysis is coughing. So hemoptysis, uh, in England, would put a, in the UK, would put an A in it there. H-A-E. It means coughing up a blood. So the patient was being investigated for coughing up blood. And they stored a nasopharyngeal swab. And that confirmed, when they looked back, that it had SARS coronavirus 2 on it. So that was somewhat consistent. That was December now, another interesting area of study, and we did look at this at the time, uh, analysis of hospital traffic and search engine data in Wuhan, China, indicates early disease activity in the fall or autumn of 2019. So again, we're talking about August, September, October, November. And during that time, this is from the Harvard Library, um, that's the reference for that. Check it out for yourself. Increased hospital traffic in the Wuhan region. Now, this was actually quite sophisticated. They did uh, satellite imagery of Wuhan hospital car parks. In August, September, they were getting very busy. And, of course, this means that the, uh, the cover-up, and it was a cover-up in the early stages in Wuhan, was earlier than we had, earlier than we had originally thought. Pity about that. Pity about that cover-up. Satellite imagery and COVID-19 related queries in search engines. And again, they had access to this data via methods that I don't know what they were, but they did. So there you go. Um, three lines of evidence. But it, to me, that evidence is definitive that the virus was clearly detected uh, or, or the antibody that had been made in response to the virus 
on the 3rd of September 2019 in Italy. Therefore, the virus must have arrived in August. Doesn't look like it was any earlier than that because of the low proportion of immunoglobulin type uh, type Gs and the high proportion of immunoglobulin type Ms. The M is for immediate, immediate. So the IgGs take longer to form. So it's looking like if you had to sort of pick a date, you'd say that the virus arrived in Italy on about the 20th to the 25th of August 2019. Interesting. Very interesting. Almost, uh, this is not saying it arose in Italy. It almost certainly came from China from that other data that we were looking at. But um Earlier than we thought, and of course, the reason that we had the first wave in the UK was was largely from um, from uh, Italy. People going to Italy for their skiing holidays brought it back to uh, the UK. Now, just finally and briefly, this is also interesting: the longevity, the longevity of the immune response. Now. I, I, I've been hopeful for some time that natural infection would generate fairly long-term immunity and vaccines would generate fairly long-term immunity to the SARS coronavirus 2. The reason I believe that and still believe that is, is that the virus which is closest to SARS coronavirus 2 is SARS coronavirus 1 and uh, SARS coronavirus 1 of course, was 2002-2003 outbreak, and people are still immune to that 18 years later. Um, but for this one, we only know what we've got. So as time ticks on, it's looking better and better. So this is uh, antibody presence through uh, six months after the second dose of the uh, Moderna vaccine. This messenger RNA hyphen 1273 is the Moderna vaccine. So let's look at briefly what this paper um, is about. <clears throat> uh, here we are. Uh, antibody persistence through six months. And it's actually, it's actually slightly longer. It's 30 weeks. So um, Moderna MNRA severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2 vaccine. Now efficacy from clinical trials is pretty good. And we also know it's stopping people getting very ill and uh, hospitalized and dying with greater effectiveness, much greater effectiveness than this. Now, some of you who are on the ball will be probably be saying, just a minute. Yesterday, you interviewed, uh, you interviewed Dr. Pravin Nair, the infectious diseases consultant from India. And he said he was seeing people who had had one or two doses of the vaccine being admitted to his hospitals who were sick. Well, that is, um, that is true. He did say that. But... We believe this is the small minority of people who have been vaccinated because because he works in hospital. It's only the sick people that he sees. So the other 99.8 or well, the other 99.98 percent or whatever it is uh, that don't get reinfected. He doesn't see those. They don't come under his care. And he, he did stress that this is not a representative sample. This is just his experience. So I don't think those two things are in any way. Uh, contradictory. Um, durability of protection 180 days after the second dose and that takes us through to 209 days after the first dose typically about a four week gap between them were given. Antibody activity remains high in all age groups at day 209. So that is really um, quite encouraging and this is what we know so far and okay th th this study we only know what the study says, of course, this is about the Moderna vaccine. But there is evidence that the other vaccines are having similar longevity, the, the data from the Pfizer vaccine in Israel, for example. Um, results are consistent with convalescent patients with uh, COVID-19 through eight months after symptom onset. In other words, uh, the immunity seems to be lasting at least as long with the vaccine as with patients who were naturally infected. And clearly that supports the use of this vaccine in addressing the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, this is saying that the antibodies are there 209 days after the first dose of the vaccine. Now, to be fair, the antibody levels were declining. They were declining somewhat 
but they're not going to drop off a cliff. They're not going to go away straight away. But perhaps the more important part of immunity is, is the memory cells, the memory B cells, and particularly the memory T cells, and particularly the memory cytotoxic T cells that will destroy virally infected cells. And the reason people keep studying the antibodies rather than the T cells is the antibodies are much easier to study. It's quite easy to do assays to, 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 to detect the presence of um, antibodies. Well, not for me, but for the biochemists it is. But it's much harder to detect the presence of the specific um, antigen-specific memory cells. But we would assume that they are there. So I remain optimistic about the longevity of uh, immunity. And of course, that's got immensely... If I'm right, that's, that that's, gives us cause for encouragement. Uh, because I still believe that this virus can be eradicated in a few in a few seasons. Don't know how many seasons, but in a few seasons. But there you go, isn't it? It's it's really quite interesting. This virus arrived in Italy almost certainly in August 2019. It really means we've got a lot to learn about the early stages of this pandemic. And of course, that might lead us on to the origin of the pandemic because we want to know where this came from. The World Health Organization team did not supply an answer. At the time, the World Health Organization and Dr. Tedros was bouncing up and down saying, well, we need to know much more than that. And this is just the beginning. Uh, since then, I have heard uh, not another peep. So having made a fuss at the time, uh, they don't seem to have followed through with actions. So we still wallow in a deep pit of ignorance as to where this virus came from but this historical information is interesting and as people look around the world for biological samples from the second half of 2019 it'll be interesting to see what else comes up so watch this space but that's pretty interesting even as far as it goes okay well that's uh, that'll do for today i think it is a sunday so thank you for watching <laughs>